good evening and welcome to my channel. My name's Becca and today is the 10th of December 2020, which means it's day 10 of Ass, an advent of short stories. And today's story, I'm going to read you another one from Enid Blyton's The Greedy Rabbit and Other Short Stories. And this one's called Peter's Big Magnet. Peter had a big magnet. It was shaped like a horseshoe and was painted red except just at the two ends, which were black. Peter thought his magnet must have some kind, some magic about it, for it would pick up needles as easily as anything and would even draw his sister's little scissors to itself and make them stick on their two ends. He loved playing with it. Let me have your needles and scissors, he would say to Erleen, his sister. I'll show your dolls and toys how to work magic. Then he would show Eileen and the toys how the needles would move to the magnet and how the scissors would hold on to it even when he held the magnet high in the air. The scissors would not let go. They couldn't. They stuck on the magnet as if they were glued there. Then, after a time, Peter became tired of his big magnet and it was put into the toy cupboard with all the other things. The toys were rather afraid of it at first, for they wondered if it would make them stick to it, as the scissors had done. But it didn't seem to do anything to them, and after a time they would, not, they, they would take no notice of it at all. Now one day a small red goblin came into the nursery out of the mouse hole in the wall. The toys didn't look lo like the look of him at all. He was a most unpleasant little creature with green eyes, red hair and a red suit. He grinned at the toys, pulled the baby doll's hair and pinched the panda. Don't, said the panda, go away. But the goblin laughed and wouldn't go away. He stole the sweets out of the toy sweet shop and then ran off when the cock crow came. He appeared the next night and took some more sweets. The toys were very angry, for they were afraid that Peter and Eileen might think they had stolen the sweets. Then the goblin began to steal other things. He unpinned the brooch from the fairy doll's frock and put it on himself. The teddy bear fought him for that, but the goblin was such a quick and nimble fellow that the bear couldn't seem to hit him at all. The goblin punched and pinched, and soon the poor bear had to give up the fight. The next night the goblin stole the bl blue tie and went, that went round the panda's neck. He dragged it off and tied it round his neck. It didn't suit him very well, but he was pleased with it and went into the doll's house to look at himself in the mirror. Then he took the shoes off the talking doll's feet and put them on his own. His shoes were full of holes and he gave them to the doll instead of hers. She cried bitterly for she loved her own pretty blue shoes. The toys were furious with the unkind wicked little goblin but he laughed at them and did just as he pleased. Then one night he dis discovered Eileen's work basket. How pleased he was. He rummaged in it and looked at her thimble, her needles and pins, her scissors and her cottons. He liked the needles and the scissors very much indeed. He put the thimble on his head for a hat and stuffed a packet of needles into his pocket and then picked up the scissors to run off with these two. Those belong to Eileen, cried the toys indignantly. Give them back at once. Not I, laughed the goblin rudely. The toys rushed at him, but he danced round and round them and in and out, punching here and pinching there, till the toys were ready to cry with rage. And then the panda suddenly thought of a perfectly splendid idea. Really splendid. What about Peter's magnet? He rushed to the toy cupboard and poked about for it. 
At last he found it and brought it out, holding it by the red curved part. What's that you've got? cried the goblin. Something magic, said the panda. It will make you come here to us. You won't be able to go down your mouse hole tonight. Pooh, cried the go goblin mockingly. I'm not afraid of that set silly red thing. So there, he danced near to it and the panda pushed it towards him. And then a very curious thing happened. The scissors and the needles felt that they must go to the magnet. And as the needles were in the goblin's pocket and the scissors were in his hands, they pulled him to the magnet too. He found himself being taken to that big magnet and no matter how hard he tried to run away, he couldn't. The magnet pulled him and pulled him because of the needles and the scissors. Oh, ow, cried the goblin in a fright. What is this? What is pulling me? Oh, let me go. It's magic. It's magic. The toys laughed to hear the goblin so frightened. The magnet pulled him right up to the panda and the scissors stuck hard onto it. The needles tried to get out of his pocket too, but they couldn't. Seize him, cried the panda to the toys. The bear caught the gob goblin by the arms and the clockwork clown caught him by the waist. He was a prisoner. The bear tied up his hands and the dolls tied up his legs. The panda grinned and put down the magnet. Take away from him all the things he has stolen, he said. So the needles were taken from his pocket, the scissors were put back in the basket, the thimble was pulled off his head. Then his shoes were taken off and given to the doll. His blue tie was pulled away from his neck and the panda tied to it once more round his own throat again. The fairy doll took back her brooch and pinned it joyfully on her frock. Now just pay us for the sweets you have stolen, said the panda fiercely, or we will try our magic on you once again. The goblin told him to take some pennies out of his pocket. The toys did so and put them in the sweet shop to pay for the sweets. Then they untied the frightened goblin and chased him to his mouse hole. And if you dare to come back again, we'll have our magic ready for you, they said. The goblin disappeared with a yell, and that was the very last of that the toys saw of him, you may be sure. They put back Peter's magnet and danced for joy all round the nursery. What will the children say when they find the tiny pennies in the toy sweet shop, they cried. Won't Peter and Ellen be surprised? I'd love to be there when they find the goblin pennies, wouldn't you? The end. Well, that was day 10. I hope you enjoyed today's story and I'll see you tomorrow for day 11. Bye bye.